Two of our and menu controls for Silverlight, the AG Bar Suite, fully support runtime layout persistence, meaning you can customize the menus and toolbars in your application and save that layout to a data store for future use. The data store can be a memory stream, an external file, or the Silverlight isolated storage. In this video, we'll create a standard toolbar and menu layout system and explore the several possible ways to persist the layout to a data store as well as load them back into the application. So let's get started. I'll start with a Silverlight application project. You can see that I've already prepared the application by creating the necessary bars and items. Here's the XAML markup. The icons for the bar items are located in the Images Icons folder of the Silverlight project. To demonstrate multiple ways to persist the layout, I'm going to add some buttons at the top of the application. I'll start by creating a stack panel and set the orientation, margin, height, and grid row properties accordingly. I'll populate it with five button controls. Let's go ahead and create new handlers for their click events. I switch back to the designer and you can see the buttons are displayed side by side at the top of the application. I'll switch to code view to create the code required to persist the layout. I'll add several assembly references that I'm going to need throughout the application. Next, I paste the following lines of code. Here, I've created a new stream object, set the isolated storage file name where the layout will be persisted, and finally, the isolated storage stream object is created and will be used later to hold the layout customization data to be persisted to Silverlight isolated storage. In the pages initializer, let's add the following code. Here, the serialization ID for the bar manager is set so that the layouts of the bars can be saved at runtime. The next line will open or create the isolated storage file. Now let's move on to the first button that will be used for saving the layout to a memory stream. You can see from the code that the save layout to stream method of the bar manager is called to save the layout settings to the memory stream. The user will then be notified via a message box that the layout was saved successfully. I'll add the code for the load memory buttons click event. Here, the restore layout from stream method is called to load the layout saved to the current memory stream. Remember that you can implement further checks to make sure the layout has been saved before attempting to load the stream, which may or not be empty. However, to keep this demo simple, I'm leaving out such checks to focus solely on the persistence functions. Now let's move on to the load external buttons click event handler. As I mentioned in the beginning, you can save bar layouts to external files as well as load them at runtime. In this case, I've already copied an existing layout definition file to the project, which you can see referenced in the code here as layout3.xml. This file will be loaded using the restore layout from stream method. Make sure that the layout file's build action property is set to be included as an embedded resource. As content, you'll not be able to load the file as demonstrated in this example. Let's move on to isolated storage. Web browsers along with internet sessions can be very volatile. You may accidentally refresh a page with your Silverlight application loaded and all the functionality or layout that was not persisted to a data store of some sort will be lost. So to persist the layout of toolbars and menus, I'll call the save layout to stream method again. However, this time, instead of specifying the memory stream, I'll use the isolated storage stream that was instantiated in the beginning of this application. I can load the isolate storage stream in the same manner by using the restore layout from stream method. Again, checks can be implemented here to ensure a saved layout exists in the isolated storage, but for this demo, we'll leave those out. I remove the this keywords as they are redundant, and I'm done. Let's run the application to see it in action. Here it is, the bars and items, as well as the buttons for persisting and loading the layouts on the top of the page. Let's give it a try. I'll start by saving the current layout to memory. You can see the message box telling me the layout was saved successfully. Now, I'll go ahead and load the layout from the external XML file. The layout is instantly updated. Let's return to the original layout that was persisted to memory.
Now let's say I accidentally refreshed the page or was required to do so to enable pop-up windows within Internet Explorer. I'll load the external layout again. But when I attempt to return to the original layout that was saved in the memory stream, the application throws a null reference exception. This is because the stream was cleared when the browser page refreshed, reloading the Silverlight application. So let's stop the application and run it again to demonstrate layout persistence to the Silverlight isolated storage. I'll prepare a similar scenario, this time loading the external layout as well as persisting it to the isolated storage. I'll refresh the page. We're back to the default layout. However, I can still load the layout as it was saved in a file in the isolated storage of the application. To learn more about AG bars and layout persistence, please refer to the documentation on the web. Thanks for watching, and thank you for choosing DevExpress.